So this is the self-development with tactics. Book. So, this one's gonna be again about Seth Gordon's The Icarus Deception, yeah? It's called The Icarus Deception, yes? And yeah, pretty amazing book, pretty amazing guy as well. And we're gonna go ahead after the intro, as always. And this time, I'm not gonna have a fucking uh, chewing gum in my mouth because it is not gonna make it better. And I do just remember that I've been eating some nuts once again, which makes my, my water and uh, my, my mouth pretty much watery, uh, which is not good for the recording itself, but I've eaten some nuts once again, and I don't know why, but yeah, anyway, let's actually go through the summary. Please check out the description, or that description actually, because there's a lot of free things that you can get. First of all, there is the link to the podcast, because this is actually a podcast and a YouTube quote-unquote show. On the other hand, you're also going to get three things, as I said. For example, the free PDFs of the things that I've highlighted in this episode or in other episodes, if I've highlighted something, then it is going to be in a tiny PDF. You can download it and print it and share it and do whatever with it. And there is everything in this that I've gone through in this episode, which is pretty amazing because some people like to listen, therefore we're having a podcast. Some people like to watch, therefore we're having the YouTube videos. And some other people like to read things, and this is why there is also the free PDF. And there is as well some music, so if you do want to have some background music in this video, then please also check out the third link, or it's actually, I think, the fourth link, but third section, something like that. And there's also just different tracks to choose from, and they're all, I think, an hour long, so, so you should be fine, everything should be fine, should be good to go, and yeah, enjoy the episode, and I'm gonna see you. Here it is, just making it a little tiny bit smaller, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is what we have gone through in the last episode. So we're going to go ahead with this bit here, which is amazing. Capitalism is driven by failure. Industrialization is about eliminating the risk of failure. Yes, it truly is. You know, this is the reason why we're having like uh, assembly lines, you know, because I mean, if there's just a lot of fucking workers and they're all just doing the, oh my fucking God, it's not been the best idea I've had. Uh, let's not keep your chewing gums in your head. Not a good idea. Really not. But if you're having an assembly line, which definitely is like just a big, 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 big part of the whole industrialization thing, then uh, you don't need a lot of workers, at least not a lot of workers that do just need to be able to just do something, you know, because assembly line work is basically something that everybody is able to do. So there's actually no risk of um, failing that part. And uh, therefore, there's also not really a big, big risk, therefore, to just fail the whole quote-unquote operation. In terms of, like, if I'm only having assembly lines and this is what my whole factory is like, then chances are pretty high that everything is going to be fine. So, at least in my point of view, it just truly, truly, truly does make sense. Well, I'm going to do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> too big to fail is the goal of every industrialist, but too big to fail means that capitalism is no longer functioning. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's now cheaper and more efficient to make edgy, amazing products for the weird edge cases that, is, that it is to push yet another average product onto the already overloaded average people in the middle. Yeah, it definitely is the case. And he's often showing like a bell curve. And in the middle of the bell curve, there is like the average person, average age, average height, average interests, average whatever. And on the very edges, there are these people that we are looking for. These people that are just truly searching for, I don't fucking know what they're searching for, for like um, pens that are first of all red, but also green. And they also just have some glitter effect. And also that everything is looking nice and fancy and shit. This is what they are looking for. But the middle is looking for something like this, just a regular pen, a regular red pen, or is it actually a pen? No, not, not, not really quite, but they're looking for so, something like this, something average, something that everyone can make and something that everyone is also making quite. So it is now cheaper to do something not for the middle, but something for those people that really want to do, have something special, something amazing, something that only maybe you can do. Who knows? 
Maybe it is the case. Better sorry than safe. I'm sorry, but it turned out not to be as good as I thought it is. Maybe. I don't know. And there is actually a quote by Rainer Maria Rilke. A German... I'm actually not quite sure if he is German. Let's see. Oh, actually an Austrian poet. The more I know. The more I know. You know... Um, We've gone through him in school as well, but uh, it seems to be the case that, <laughs> that I haven't been listening that well to whatever was said. But, but yeah, have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves and the progress itself. You know, th this is the whole point here, you know, loving the process, because if you hate the process, then of course, uh, maybe the result is going to be good, even though you, you hate the process and whatnot, but it's not going to be really satisfying. It's not going to be really cool. It's not going to be really nice. You know, you're not going to love your life that much if you do just hate every single second that you're working on something. But if you really love whatever the fuck you're doing, then it is a great sign. And it is also, is at least at my point of view, a great sign that whatever you're doing is also going to be successful because if it is already fun, if it is already just something that you really, really fucking love to do, then chances are pretty high and pretty good, which is amazing. So do that, you know, do that. The Forbes 400, the lucky few the lucky few who have won the corporate lottery. Like most lotteries, this is a loser's game with the odds against you. Well, we can't suddenly quit a job and then race to find a form of art that will pay off before the next mortgage payment is due. Creating art is a habit, one that we practice daily or hourly until we get good at it. Yes, and like... At this point, it is also important to just do something that you kind of f find love in. I do not really want to say that you should be just passionate about it, you know, and you should just love it, and it should be something that you've always been loving and, and whatnot. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case, because we can always find passion in whatever the fuck we are doing. We can. You know, if you don't, then it's probably not the thing that you should be doing, I guess. But if you do, then it is a good sign. And if you do, it is... Oh, it's a pretty cool thing. On the other hand, um, doing something daily, doing something hourly, or maybe doing something every single fucking minute is, is, is like exhausting if it is something that you do not really like or you do think is unnecessary or nonsensical or all these things. But if it is something that you appreciate and if it is something that you think makes sense, then it's going to be good, you know, it's going to be amazing and it's going to be also something that that you're also then going to work on hourly, every minute, every day, every week, whatnot. What matters now is, and this is something that I really think about and also I thought about it, but I also would say like it just makes sense and I think it is definitely kind of the truth here. So what does matter now or what matters now is Trust, permission, remarkability, leadership, stories that spread, and humanity, like connection, compassion, and humility. And here is the thing, all six of these are the result of successful work by artists. Leadership puts the leader on the line. Yes, yes, because everything, everything is on the shoulders of the leader. If it is good, it's the leader's fault. If it is bad, it's the leader's fault. If it is something in between, it's the leader's fault or maybe the leader's win. If you ask someone for the rule book on how to lead, you're secretly wishing to be a manager. Leaders are vulnerable, not controlling, and they are taking us to a new place. Which sounds actually pretty amazing, but I don't know if these people that actually are leaders, if they're also thinking about it in that way. We seek out human originality and caring. What we are drawn to is the vulnerability and transparency that brings that bring us together. Like, yes, indeed. And it is something that that I've read quite often and that I've also, I think, seen quite often that um, if you truly are vulnerable and if you're making yourself vulnerable, it is often a pretty good thing to, first of all, connect to other human beings, um, to also be more human and therefore being able to just, um, you know, let, let other people connect to you a little more easy. Just the fucking chewing gum on my fucking hands, it pisses me off. <laughs> because I have to do my hair, but if I'm just putting this fucking chewing gum in my hair, it's not going to be good. 
it's in fact gonna be uh, really shitty. <laughs> Our revolution is turning most business into show business. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. Like, I'm not really that big into businesses. Like, uh, and I also like you can say that the whole YouTube thing and the whole social media thing is a business, but but I don't really consider it to be one. Kind of. I don't actually know why. Maybe it's just because it's so. So what it is. So, so whatever. Like, I don't actually know. Um, when they move from task to show, they're adding far more value than ever before. Because value is not only information. Value is not only just, I don't know, f- three things or three things. And value is not only whatever. Because value just really comes up to whomever you're trying to serve. Some people think that entertainment is value, and it definitely is for some people. Some people think that they just, you know, some people want to have information, and this is their value. And some people want to have, like, some artist's stuff, like, real art right now. Not, li- not like what he's talking and referring to, but art, like a painting or whatever, or just having something like aesthetics. For some people, this is value. You know, and therefore it just also really comes up to whom you're trying to serve and knowing your target audience and knowing the people and knowing the customers and knowing uh, just all these different amazing beings. Connection requires emotional labor. A little more emotional labor is often worth a lot. The race to the bottom is lower prices. Find cheaper labor. What the race to the to the bottom is lower prices, so find cheaper labor. The other race is the race to the top, the opportunity the opportunity to be the one they can't live without. And this is a common theme that he is often referring to and often talking about. Making something so that people are gonna come to you if you're not giving it to them anymore. Which means if you're having a podcast and you're doing this on a on a weekly basis, but for one week you just decide to just stop it because of whatever reason and if then people email you and if then people come up to you and be like why isn't there any podcast any longer you know then you know that you're doing something good because you're doing something for the people and they can't live without it because it is so good at least for them even though you might think it is not good even though some other people might think it is not good if it is good enough for those people that you're trying to serve then it is good enough delivering more for more It is not what you've got, it is how brave you're prepared to be. It's not what you've got, it is how brave you're prepared to be. I don't really get it, but it sounds cool. (laughs) Really sounds cool. There are problems waiting to be solved. Once you realize that uh, that you have all the tools and all the permission you need, the opportunities to distribute abound. We have everything. We don't need anything. You don't need a new computer. You actually really don't need anything. Like, all the things that you need, you're already having. Even if it is not just the highest quality. Like, I'm recording with my fucking phone, and this is the 700th fucking episode. I'm not successful with it yet. I'm waiting for it, though. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to be there. I don't know if I'm ever going to achieve that. I really don't know. Because the things that I'm doing just might not be good enough. Good enough based on what these people that are willing to listen to this are saying. Or on them, based on them, based on what they think and what they're saying and what they're doing and on their standards. But, but yeah. Before the revolution, virtually all musicians aren't picked by a label and are invisible non-entities. Of those who are picked, 98% fail in the marketplace. Of the remaining 2%, less than half a, half a percent ever receive a single royalty check as a result of their recorded music, ever. So we have a world where the odds of being signed are close to zero. And the odds of getting a a check as a result of of your sales, even if you're signed, is even closer to zero. After the revolution, a musician who sells two two copies of a song on iTunes makes more money than she would have earned from a record label for selling an entire CD for $17. There are more musicians making more money being heard by more people and earning more money than ever before. Oh, I'm sorry, Uh, there are more, I've just wondered why the sentence is so bad, but it's actually a really cool sentence, really amazing one. 
like like language can really be something pretty satisfying to be honest there are more musicians making more music being heard by more people and earning more money than ever before and i would say this as well like if you just take advantage of all these possibilities that we're having for example soundcloud first of all second of all tiktok which is i think a pretty hot tech if you're trying to just make your music pop you know because if it is a good song and if they are then gonna just use it because it is a good song, then it is gonna get pretty popular, you know? And I I think I've also seen it with a song, but I do not remember which one it was. Quite actually a lot, you know, because often I find some songs and I really, really, really like them. And then I look them up and see that the, the artist or the other music the artist is doing is really not popular. And only due to TikTok, a lot of people are just searching it up and a lot of people are listening to it because... They've seen it on, on TikTok. Now, multiply what happened to music by a million. Multiply it by consulting, coaching and design. Multiply it by manufacturing, speaking and on profits. And multiply it by whatever it is you care enough to do. That is what after looks like. What after looks like. After all these evolutions. After all these things that we could take advantage of. But we are often not doing it, unfortunately. When she makes her own, and by the way, this is something that I do want to point out. She, when she makes her own art, Seth Gordon is really not often talking about him or a he, which is something that I really appreciate because it's, I notice it. I don't know if some other people notice it as well, but I assume we do because it is something that's not the usual thing, but he's doing it. And I really appreciate that because just, just maybe actually because it is not the usual thing, you know? Maybe just only based because based on the fact that it is not the usual thing. When she makes her own art at her own terms, who think two things happen. She unlocks her ability to make an impact, removing all the excuses between her current place and the art she wants to make. And she exposes herself because now it is her decision to perform, not the casting director's decision. It is her repertoire that's being judged and not the dramaturgs. We can unteach bravery and, and creativity and initiative. And that we have been doing just that. And that we have been doing just that. Yeah, kind of we have. Maybe I think especially like creativity. Even though like I do have to say, like a lot of people say like, I'm not creative. We all are. Maybe not, maybe not in the same way in terms of like, not everybody is able to sit down and draw something that's amazing. Just not only because they... they can't draw which is you know which is a not really true thing in itself because we all can draw drawing is only about looking and being able to watch things and being able to look at things and just i mean for example if you just draw something hyper realistically you just have to look at the object and draw it as you're seeing the object i mean the whole proportion thing and this thing it's gonna take some practice but you only have to look and we all can look and so it all comes up to being able to look and watch things and observe things. And if you're able to do this really well, then you're also able to draw really well. But, um, but it's not that easy. Like, of course, it's not that easy. And it is something you have to train yourself to, to do, I'd say. But um, what I wanted to say is that if you just sit somebody down in front of a piece of paper with a pen, not everyone is going to be able to just draw something and going to be able to come up with something but if it is about music some people are just then going to be like well i'm going to play this and i'm going to play that some people are going to be creative in a way that is like okay i am going to build something amazing because i am a mechanic or something you know one person is going to draw something one person is going to build something one person is going to play with numbers in a really arty way you know like, and, or in a really creative way. Like, if you're able to just solve a problem in mathematics, then it could also be creative because, like, most often there are different ways to solve a problem. And so you can be creative. So, so yeah, like, there, for me, they're like, there's not only one creative, you know? But well. So Levy invented rules, algorithms, and instructions, and the craft of painting his work directly on the wall is handled by an uncredited painter. Well, an artist is someone who does, who does something for the first time, something that touches another. Yeah, I should also be doing more things for the first time. In terms of like trying more things, 
Because I find myself pretty often doing the exact same thing over and over again and then wondering why nothing happens. Nothing different happens. And I'm, I'm doing it right now. Like I've been doing the exact same thing, sitting here and just recording something for quite some time. So, yeah. I think this is a good place to do something. But we gotta have to wait. The question of the day. What's the question of the day? The question of the day is... What are you doing, and ask yourself, please, what are you doing every single time, but you still wonder why you're getting the exact same results? What is it? You know, maybe there's actually something similar to what I'm doing. Maybe it's something completely different. Like, I don't know, please ask yourself, because I do believe it is an amazing question, and I do believe that it is an amazing question that can really, really, really develop your thinking and develop also and or unlock something, unlock something in terms of new ideas, in terms of a new perspective, something like that. So please ask yourself, please, 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 please. Um, Yeah, you know, I should also be doing something else. Uh, I have in terms of like the, the question of the day, this is something that I've started really, really recently, actually yesterday, because I thought it is something pretty cool and I thought it is something... Uh, amazing actually as well because also because like I'm also getting bored of sitting here every single day uh, to, to some degree not fully it just really depends on the day and really depends on how I'm feeling because for example for me this episode is one of the shittiest episodes that I've ever recorded in in quite some time because I'm, I'm not feeling like just doing it and also I would say that the the talking part is is also not that good to today you know but I don't know like it could also be the complete opposite for you it might be a really good episode but yeah, therefore, I think I'm also going to end the episode there. Uh, so I wish you the best health of habits and also success and also hope that you're going to remember something you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person and being remembered as a nice person. Three questions that I'm having for you are, why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea. And with, with that being said, I'm hopefully going to see you the next time and bye-bye. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. So bye.